Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. Today we'll be talking about the 3D, 5D split that is happening. We are seeing it and many of you are feeling it, especially after the solar eclipse. Many of you wrote us like, you've started to feel much lighter. Is this, you know, anything related to the energy, everything that's happening on the world and all of that? And the answer is yes so things are only deepening things are getting more intense like light is getting brighter and the darkness is getting more dense so if you're constantly you know enlightening your own darkness you're becoming lighter if you're ignoring your darkness it is becoming more dense so where are you i'm sure you you're in the light right so this is your sign my friend to let go of worries and fully trust in what you're doing everything is falling into place and your greatest power lies in releasing the need to feel safe as it indicates that you are not when you deeply embody trust you will find safety within it embracing this is a powerful act of letting go so, my friend, today we'll be talking about what is going on on the energy level right now in the universe and also how to protect your energy during this intense time. So, yesterday somebody wrote us, if I could share how I am protecting my energy so I'm not affected by evil things that are happening all around us so we can stay in our authenticity we can stay true to ourselves to our needs so we can be the greatest possible versions of ourselves so then we can also share this with others right it's about passion it's about growth and it's about contribution that's what makes yourself even more grounded and stronger but when what we need to understand is when it comes to protection of your energy you're not really protecting yourself because protection actually closes your heart when we say protection we actually mean that we honor ourselves we don't allow the outer world to dim our light to dim our greatness we honor ourselves and therefore we are being ourselves we're doing what's the best for ourselves so we can also be the best version we can be for others right you choose yourself you choose to love yourself you choose to care for yourself you choose to be kind towards yourself you choose to be authentic and truthful towards yourself i will share many practical steps with you what can you do on a daily basis so you can stay aligned with the rhythm that is making your heart beating, right? So what's happening in the world, firstly? Well, according to modern satellites, around 2160 years ago, the planet Earth has entered into astrological age of Pisces. So Pisces was this age of, of separation, the age of duality, the age where people started forming their own opinions. People started getting slowly their own understandings, their own experiences, and it started causing a great separation that started happening all around the world. Like everyone was kind of standing for their own opinion and it started causing many fights, many wars, a lot of you know tension which is just a process of our own individualization so nothing wrong with that it's just a very painful process that's why this age is also called in many traditions as the, uh, the dark age because it was very very painful but each astrological age lasts for around 2000 160 years which means that we are just in the process of entering into a new age which is an age of Aquarius the age of Aquarius is also known as the golden age in many ancient traditions which means that we are entering into the age where all these understandings that have been formed through our personal experiences through all these different lifetimes 
are now being fully, slowly but fully integrated. So slowly what we're seeing on the world, the bridge is happening between one understanding and another. People are coming back together with their own opinions, with their own understanding, slowly forming a big picture. We see a great merge between science and spirituality, which in the age of Pisces started to separate itself, you know? In ancient times, science and spirituality were not really separated. There were, they were one and the same thing. Like, science was explaining and proving how the spirit is manifesting itself in matter, and spirituality was teaching how to experience what science is talking about, how to live in spirit, how to feel spirit, how to remember who you are and therefore manifest life through this knowing, through this feeling and being yourself. So it was a merge, but then during the age of Pisces, it started separating. So science took a part in everything that was kind of tangible, in everything that was being able to prove to measure and spirituality went into a more denser kind of reality where it formed a religion of everything that was kind of in the field of faith so it caused a separation until at some point people started waking up and noticing hey it's it's not really about a belief system it's more about a real experience. So let's recognize how can I experience God? How can I connect with God? And that's where people started waking up and sharing their knowledge and it just led us to where we are today. So all of what is happening right now is a byproduct of everything, of all the universal alignments, of all the astrological alignments, but also of the awakening of the collective consciousness. So, as much as it's uh, a very positive thing that's happening, it brings with it a lot of darkness. It brings with it a lot of heaviness, like a massive confusion in the minds of many people. Like in the recent years, we've seen a massive confusion. Many people needed to make very, very heavy decisions and it caused a lot of pain. It caused a lot of trauma and and anger and frustration in the hearts of many. So even though it's a very bright thing that it, what is happening on the world, it's also very heavy to move through it. And many of you who are more empathic, more sensitive to energy, can easily feel the, you know, the dark aspect of it. You can easily feel, especially if you're living in more crowded areas, you can feel the confusion, you can feel the fear that's in the air, you can feel anger and worry in the air. So that's why it's so important to learn to protect yourself from these negative energies, to learn to, to really embrace yourself and not, you know, allowing the outer world to dim your light. So that's why I'm sharing today with you painting the source, which was like channeled for this time, showing, you know, having a symbol of the source, like maybe how it would look if you would imagining it. And, and many times when people observe this painting, they just experience a deep sense of peace. So you can go and check it out on attractpassion.com. There's also a deep um, explanation of it. So check it out. You can also get a copy of it. And so what can you do to protect your energy? Well, you've noticed that during this time, there's also more and more and more of production happening, like more content, more information. We are in the age of information. So it's so much easier, easier to be distracted during this time. And one thing that will help you to protect your energy is really to limit distraction so we can stay in touch with your own rhythm. You see that the universe we're living in has its own rhythm that is guiding us through this process. And to those people who are more in tune with it, they just feel guided. You know, I feel guided, like I'm navigating my work with this rhythm. And you, you found many people right now on social media, many great teachers, many great guides, many light workers. 
you've seen them being guided and they're just getting stronger and stronger. Have you noticed that maybe your favorite teachers, whoever they are, they're just becoming stronger and stronger. They are great examples what it means to live in the light, but also embody darkness and enlighten it. That's what it means. But anyone who's doing that have noticed I can only really be in tune with my own rhythm if I limit distractions, if I can listen to myself, if I can take time and be in solitude for a certain period of time so I can master certain things, so I can become good at certain skills and I can notice what I want to do. And sometimes, you know, just letting things be and letting thing, things go, you allow so the universe take care of what needs to be taken care of and you stop worrying about how everything will turn out to be. So limit distraction, pay attention to your emotions and energy levels. Be aware of any sudden shifts or changes maybe in your mood and recognize how energy shifts affect you in maybe this present time and just, you know, allow it to happen. Sometimes you may feel more tired right now, rest more. Sometimes you, you may feel more overwhelmed. Let it be, let things settle. Ellen Watts said, a moody water can be cleansed just by letting it be, right? When you have a moody water in the glass, for example, put that glass on the table, the mood will fall down onto the ground and the water will purify. I mean, it will just get clean. That's same with your mind, it's same with being emotionally overwhelmed. Just give yourself space and be. That's a great way to protect your energy. If you're feeling overwhelmed, worrying what's happening, give yourself space. Go into the nature for a longer period of time, go to travel, or do something for yourself and just be. Don't distract yourself constantly. Don't, you know, don't just, you know, keep getting certain mental impulses, certain information impulses. Allow yourself to be. The second one is very powerful. It helps me so much. It's grounding. So there's many different practices for grounding. One is just to go outside, be in nature, enjoy nature, observe it. Sometimes I just, you know, Look at the trees, how they are moving in the wind, not thinking about anything else, but just observing it, just, you know, thinking how that tree feels like when the tree is so when the wind is so gently moving it. Great form of grounding, you know, just connecting with nature. But also a form of grounding is that you can imagine how your root energy center is deeply connected with the earth and you feel all of yourself inside of your body, just feel your body, feel the skin of your body, bones, muscles, feel yourself. So you find the separation between you and everybody else, between you and everything else. So you notice you are a unique individual here and more you feel yourself, more you also start noticing the authentic aspect of yourself, what makes you, you. So this is a great form of grounding. Another great form of grounding is a workout, working out, doing certain practices that uh, really resonate with you. Like, I love workouts, I love doing strength workouts, I love going on a bike and things like that. It helps me to stay grounded, to be myself and to also stay sharp, right? So what's happening around me is not distracting me. Then the third thing that will help you to protect your ener energy during this intense times is to set boundaries it's essential to to set boundaries you know with others to say no this is something i don't tolerate and express you know express what you don't tolerate get away from toxic people move away you know distance yourself even if they're your family look sometimes it's much healthier if you distance yourself for a certain period of time so you can find yourself, right? It's, it's healthy. Even if it's your family, it's healthy. Set boundaries. Also limit your time with people who are not really inspiring to you. It doesn't mean you should just erase them from your life, like people who are not allowing you to grow or whatever. But set 
a time limit like you will not spend all day long with them if they're just dimming your light right that's how you set boundaries it's very helpful but then also surround yourself with people who are strengthening your light who are making you stronger who are making you wiser if you don't you know have this kind of a tribe around you surround yourself with books of this kind of people surround yourself maybe you know certain social media accounts that are empowering you but make sure that then you use it and you actually find a tribe in your real actual life because there's nothing like a real physical connection right but trust the timing the right people will come to you especially right now then the fourth reminder that will help you to to strengthen your energy is to notice it right notice your energy feels uniquely to you you know for example when you feel very joyful about something how does that joy feels like truly how does it feel like or when you feel very passionate about something or when you feel very in love with something how does it feel that's what is very that's what is really strengthening your chi energy. That's what is strengthening your life force. That's where you become more aware of the self, right? The self is an energy life force within you. And you feel it when you're in more positive emotions. So ask yourself, what is helping you to be more in these positive emotions and do more of it? Do more of it. Like whatever it is, whatever brings excitement into your life a sense of adventure into your life a sense of happiness and joy into your life do more of it then the second thing that will help you to strengthen your energy is to become very good at what brings joy and happiness like for me it was when i've started painting i've noticed i really lose myself in it but more i was getting better and better in painting more my energy started strengthening but then the third part is contribution contribution will strengthen your energy because that will be the point where you will notice oh my energy is not here just for me it's so i can share it with others so i can contribute so i can spark more lights on this planet right so it's passion joy happiness or any other positive emotion then it's growth growing in it and then it's contribution if you remember these three words passion growth contribution you can also write them in the comment section you will remember how to strengthen your energy then the fifth reminder is to take breaks if you feel like um, overwhelmed give yourself permission to take breaks and step away from certain intense situations to recharge and regain balance this is very important especially if you're working nine to five if you have a certain job that is sometimes more intense look give yourself permission to take a break right and maybe do some deep breaths if something is intense is happening at your home like something you can't really control much give yourself a break and sometimes give yourself a break from your own life and reflect a little bit could you change something could you make some different decisions could you make some different choices in the future no i have this rule for clarity it's let things be let things go and question so sometimes when you can't change what is happening let it be but make sure that you focus on what can you change for the future events like new choices what can you do differently then let go of the expectation how things should happen how something should find you let it go do your best work hard on you know reaching your goals and all of it but let go of how it should happen it will help you so much and then question your beliefs keep questioning your beliefs anything that you feel that is not really constructive on your path right now question it question it and you will be amazed how information finds you so synchronistically when you question it you see things actually find you answers find you when you ask for them they don't find you out of nowhere they find you when you ask for them that's what the universe is saying look if you will ask you will get ask it so you can receive it right that's what it means 
The sixth reminder is a regular mindset check. Well, the world is mental is a first hermetic principle and there's a lot of truth to it. You see, we don't experience life. We actually experience what we focus on, right? We don't see life as it is. We see it as we are. It's all mental. So be kind towards yourself and use some positive informa affirmations sometimes. Like keep, as I said, questioning your belief systems, but also make sure you're installing information in your mind that helps you to evolve. Like I love books, but I'm reading books that are helping me to grow. I'm reading books that are helping me to expand my mind, to see life through a brighter perception, to, to get you know, to read things that help me to grow, that help me to really be more positive about life. So keep constantly expanding your mind. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So use it. You have access to all kinds of information. So it's your choice what you're truly consuming. And it's very po important at this point to feed yourself with information that helps you to grow. It's not avoiding negative sensations. It's not avoiding negative emotions. It's, it's more like studying how can I deal with it the most constructively, the most compassionately, the most passionately, lovingly, right? Whom could I study that could teach me how can I deal with this fear with courage? How could I deal with this toxic person with boundaries, kindness, but integrity, right? If my financial situation is being very stuck right now, how could I find a new stream of income? How could I apply for a new job? Like how or where to look? Like study options, study options, my friend. And the eighth reminder that will help you to protect your energy during this time is to limit exposure to negativity, to any information or anything that is really dimming your energy, dimming your light, limit your exposure to it. You will see you just don't need so much of negative news. You just don't need so much of people who are constantly complaining and gossiping and and sharing with you their struggles. You don't need that. So sure, life is not just about, you know, being in our own perfect frame or whatever. It's about giving and receiving. But you have control over how much you allow yourself to be exposed to negativity. You can't fully avoid it, but you can choose to be exposed more frequently to positivity than negativity, right? through books, through videos, through music, through what you're doing, through your own habits, actions, words you're using, words or spells. All of that is a choice and you can choose to be exposed to more positivity. Look, on a long term, more you choose to expose yourself to good stuff, better you will be, right? It's like a food, whatever you consume becomes you. So when you choose to consume something that's healthier, you will become healthier. Isn't that so? And the last reminder that will help you to be in yourself, to fully embrace yourself is to nourish your soul. Nourish your soul. What does it mean? Well, what puts your soul on fire, my friend? What puts your soul on fire? If I ask you right now, like, can you remember who you were before the world told you who you need to be, right? Remember the quote, who you were before the world told you who you need to be. Can you remember that? Some of you may say, oh no, I can't. But if you go into your child life, in your, <laughs> into your childhood, and maybe recognize when you've been hurt so you've stopped being yourself you will notice something happened maybe you've been exposed to many traumatic events maybe nobody noticed how incredible you are how gifted you are maybe nobody said to you that um, they love you so you've started to believe that you're no one you've started to believe that um, 
you're unworthy, you've started to believe that you don't matter. And you, you took it as a truth, but it's not the truth. The truth is that you matter, that you are important, that you are gifted in some way. And once you find what it is by constant searching it, right, questioning it, don't think you should find it right now, but you know through questioning you will find it out, through giving yourself space and time you will find it out. What puts your soul on fire? You see, this age of Aquarius that we're slowly entering in is all about authenticity. It's all about people living in their power and therefore contributing to a, to a greater order on the world with it. So each person slowly embodies his complete authenticity and with that he or she is serving the world. That is the age of Aquarius that's happening. That's why it's age of the wise one, right? Wisdom, wise dome, right? The, the home of the wise ones. That's where we are entering in. We are entering into the age of the wise ones. And in order to fully enter it, you need to become the wise one. And you can only become wise by going through as many experiences as you can, right? Life really becomes interesting when you make it interesting. And in order to make your life interesting, you need to try many different things, right? You, it's all about having an abundance of experiences. That's what makes you very, very knowledgeable, very experienced and very interesting. So through that, you will also find out what puts your soul on fire and that's how you nourish your soul. So my friends, I hope you found a great value in today's message. I hope it can help you explain a little bit what's happening right now, maybe in your life or maybe around you or why people are acting so weird around you. <laughs> I hope it can explain this a little bit. Let me know in, in the comment section if it was helpful, what was your lesson or your greatest value you took from it. What's your favorite practice for being, you know, protecting your energy, nourishing it, noticing it. Let me know. And also thanks to everyone for joining our Patreon community where I'm sharing more practical lessons, exclusive content that I'm not posting on YouTube, very practical lessons and workshops. And also thanks to everyone for supporting my art. With that, you're supporting this mission and I'm truly grateful to you. You can find it on attractpassion.com and for every first time buyer you can use the code passion 15 to get 15 off and to anyone who are etsy buyers you can also find our etsy store on i draw my passion i draw my passion on etsy so also to anyone who'd love to work with me one-on-one -on -one, you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching session you can book it in the link in the description so go and check it out my friends till next time one love